Hi, everyone. On March 25th, I posted on Twitter, it's almost the end of March, and I'm wondering why there still isn't another House of the Dragon trailer and or still pics. And then five days later, after my post, boom, the old gods and the new answer my call with not only some new pictures featuring never before seen costumes, but also a release date. Now, in case you didn't know, HBO has announced that the House of the Dragon is set to debut on Sunday, August 21st, right on the heels of the widely anticipated Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power on Amazon Prime. Lord of the Rings is scheduled to premiere nearly two weeks later on Friday, September 2nd, 2022. So much fantasy at once. Does anyone else think this is bonkers? Let me know in the comments if you'll be watching both shows. I've covered a lot of the cast and the costumes that we saw in both the earlier images. I think they were from about six months ago when there were some set leaks. And then I also did a trailer reaction if you want to get a more fleshed out analysis so far. I don't typically analyze costumes before the show is out, but I feel fairly comfortable with the story and the characters discussing this. But my opinions might change after I see the show and the costumes in context. I don't think a spoiler warning is needed. But if you are a show-only person and haven't read Fire and Blood, I'll try not to get into the weeds so as not to spoil the show for you. Now with that aside, let's get into the new still images and the costumes designed by costume designer Jenny Tamim. If you watched my other videos so far about House of the Dragon, I haven't been impressed with some of the costumes and the wigs. I was starting to come around after I saw the teaser, and now that I've seen these still images, I'm fully on board. It's not to say that I won't disagree with the choice, hey, everyone is entitled to their opinion. But my faith in the Seven has been restored that House of the Dragon will at least rise to the quality of Game of Thrones. It's still early to tell if it will match it. For the sake of this video, I will do a character at a time based upon the order HBO released them. King Viserys Targaryen, played by Paddy Cosendine. We saw Viserys in the teaser trailer sitting on the Iron Throne. However, the top of his head was cut off, and we really couldn't see much of the costume except for the fairly faint impression of the Viserys' personal sigil of the four-footed Targaryen dragon on the breast of his tunic. He was holding Blackfire, one of the two ancestral swords of House Targaryen. Now in this photo, he appears to be seated at dinner with Queen Alicent. With this higher resolution picture, I can make up the sigil is embroidered on the front of his tunic. Many fans have pointed out that Viserys is wearing the cat's paw dagger, which during the teaser ends clutched in the hand of Alicent. It was blurry in the teaser as well, but it was there. With the heavily trimmed shoulder wings and front facings, The vest appears to be the same one, but I'm not sure about the under tunic. The design team has favored the black and some red from the sigil as opposed to the dark purple worn by Viserys in the books as described in Fire and Blood. I can't fault the designers for this because it's more in keeping with the show and what fans will likely expect. Overall, this costume looks pretty good. I'm looking forward to seeing it in full. Prince Daemon Targaryen, played by Matt Smith. Daemon's costume is similar to the other costumes seen in the earlier still image, teaser, and set photo. I mentioned before that his silhouette is not uncommon in the Game of Thrones universe, a style that has bathingly stayed in fashion for 180 years. The cut of the coat, except for the princess seams, or in this case, prince seams, is very close to those worn by King Joffrey Baratheon, who was a great admirer of the Targaryen aesthetics. The coat is made from two contrasting fabrics, possibly black velvet or suede, and a shimmery black scale fabric that is similar to the first jacket from the still photos. The sleeve fabrics from that, I think, is this crocodile print jersey from Top Fabric of Soho. And like the other jacket, there is this contrasting piping, this time in a dark red on the sleeves. He also has shoulder wings that broaden out his shoulders. Damon is wearing the same coat in this leaked set photo, and from this, we can see that the coat is lined in red. Damon has foregone the gold in favor of silver clasps, 
belt mounts, and jewelry in the same way that all of Daenerys Targaryen's fasteners and jewelry were in silver. I think this helps to separate himself from the reigning dynasty of King Viserys Targaryen, Daemon's brother. And in this picture, he is holding the longsword Dark Sister, the other ancestral sword of House Targaryen. Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, played by Emma Darcy. Rhaenyra's costume is a pleasant surprise. I had mentioned in past videos that I didn't think that her costumes had a queenly silhouette, likely because of the lack of foundation garments that would give her some gravitas. It's difficult to judge this costume entirely because we're only getting a cropped image, but this looks very promising. Emma Darcy looks beautiful in this costume, and the textured brocade of her gown is so gorgeous, I don't even mind the princess seams. The ground of the fabric looks black, although it could possibly be dark purple. I hope I can track it down eventually. There are these little silver dots all over the fabric. At first, I thought they were half pearls, but I think that they are just these shiny silver dots. There's also a velvet ribbon and gimp trim and some red piping on the center front opening. But my favorite aspect is this black fur collar or hood of the gown. The fur is also sandwiched between the opening. Fur was often worn by nobility in Game of Thrones, such as by the Starks, the Lannisters, the Baratheons, and most notably by Daenerys Targaryen. During Henry VIII's reign, sumptuary laws were enacted to enforce order and obedience to the crown that continued under Queen Elizabeth I until 1600. Part of the law stated that only nobility were allowed to wear fur of sables in their gowns, kirtles, partlets, and sleeves. But I should also mention that fur here is likely to be practical against the cold. Rhaenyra is also wearing the same earrings from her other look, but I can't quite make out the shape of the metal fastener at the top of her gown. Leaves, maybe? Let me know in the comments if you can tell what the shape is. Alison Hightower, played by Olivia Cook. Alison appears seated at dinner with her husband, King Viserys. This is a new gown for Alison, emerald green with a contrasting lame gold. In present day, she will likely dress in variations of green because of the rival Targaryen factions of the Greens versus the Blacks. From what we've seen so far on Alicent, the Hightower's costumes appear inspired by the Renaissance era. This triangle-shaped collar on Alicent's gowns is specifically Elizabethan. There are many examples of this style of collar, often worn with a stiff collar or ruff during this period. The triangular insert in this case is called a partlet. All of Alicent's jewelry is gold, with the addition of green gemstones in her earrings and necklaces, She's wearing the same gold livery we saw on her other gown, as I mentioned in another video, that this ties into Queen Cersei Lannister's use of wearing such jewelry that was much more typically worn by men during the Renaissance. The gold pendant on her necklace is the Faith of the Seven Star, and the fabric of the bodice has these lovely appliques with traceries of gold thread. In my opinion, this is a huge improvement over her other gown. Otto Hightower, played by Reese Fenz. Otto's costume is really sharp. It's beautifully tailored, and I like the choice of fabrics. The color might be kind of a khaki brown green, but it's difficult to ascertain because of the color grading in this interior scene. I don't know if Otto will ever go on full green like his daughter, even though he's also in the green faction. His jacket appears to be in the doublet silhouette, although I can't be completely certain because it's caught up just above the waist. The shoulder wings, a detail often seen in Renaissance doublets and jerkins, were added to hide the laces of the detachable sleeves. Here are two examples from the late 16th and early 17th century. For consistency, this costume has three button groupings on the front placket, and he's wearing the Hand of the King brooch, on the right side in the same manner as Tyrion and Tywin Lannister and Kyburn. Around his neck, they have added an additional gold chain. As I mentioned in my other video, there are plenty of 16th century paintings depicting men wearing gold chains such as this. Lord Corley's Valerion and Princess Rainey's Targaryen, played by Steve Toussaint and Eve Best. 
These two costumes are a challenge for me to analyze because the picture is not only dark but grainy too. But from what I can tell, they look pretty good. In this profile, Rainy's wig looks considerably better than it did in the teaser. Their costumes look less formal than we saw in the court, but Corley's is armed with a dagger, so he could be on his guard. Young Rhaenyra and young Alicent, played by Millie Alcock and Emily Carey, respectively. Others have mentioned that this appears to be from the same setting in the teaser when the young women were at the tourney at Maidenpool to celebrate Rhaenyra's father, who had recently ascended to the throne. I'm not convinced that it is the same because in that setting, Rhaenyra wears a white stand-up, almost Elizabethan-style collar, although it may be detachable, and Allison's gown looks bluer at the tourney, while in this setting, it's a softer blue-gray. Of this grouping of pictures, Rhaenyra's red Dupiani silk v-neck gown is my favorite. I'm thrilled to see that it looks like embroidery artist Michelle Carriger is back on the show because this has the hallmarks of her work. She used this beaded running stitch on Danny's iconic blue costume. The gold and red stump work embroidery on her sleeve cuffs look like Michelle's work as well, reminiscent of the line appliques on many of Cersei's gowns. It appears that there is a large applique on the front of her gown, perhaps the Targaryen dragon sigil. But what I love most is this fine trim on the cuffs that almost look like tiny little daggers. Rhaenyra is wearing a gold index finger ring with a red gemstone. Young Alicent's dress is simple but pretty. The fabric of her dress has this subtle pattern that's contrasted with the piping on the collar. The detail I like most is this beading and narrow trim on the sleeve cuff. I can't wait to see the full look of these costumes. Allison is wearing a lot of jewelry. She wears a gold necklace and drop earrings with a clear gemstone. But what I see under Rhaenyra's hand is the ring that looks similar in shape to Rhaenyra's, which makes me wonder if they gave each other these rings as a sign of their friendship. Sir Kristen Cole, played by Fabian Frankel. According to Fire and Blood, Sir Kristen Cole is Lord Commander of the King's Guard for King Viserys I Targaryen. He is seen in this picture wearing his white cloak King's Guard armor, which is different from his tourney armor that he wore in the teaser. His costume is aligned to canon in the show, as opposed to the description in the books, which are white cloaks and intricate suits of white enameled scales, their fastening for breastplate, and other pieces made of silver. This is because Game of Thrones costume designer Michelle Clapton changed the designs in the show because she didn't think the costumes would translate well to the small screen. As you might recall, each reigning monarchy determines the look of the armor of their king's guard. So in the Game of Thrones show, we saw the armor design change as it was passed from Robert to Joffrey to Tom and to Cersei, who completely abandoned any semblance of the white cloak design altogether, and then finally back to King Bran the Broken. There was also a flashback scene under Mad King Aerys II Targaryen, where we saw Sir Arthur Dane with Lord Commander Gerald Hightower in their King's Guard uniforms. At the Tower of Joy, they aren't wearing their cloaks, but we see it on Jamie from behind as he slays the Mad King. I know many of you won't like it when I say that I'm not crazy about this armor. We had a heads up about this armor in the leaked set photos, and from those, I didn't like it at all. And then later, a quick shot of Sir Harold Westerling and Kristen Cole in the teaser. With that being said, it looks much better in close-up, and the construction of it is beautifully done by Simon Brindle and his team, who also created the armor in early seasons of Game of Thrones. The smaller details, like the stamped and embossed elements, are lovely. It reminds me of the engravings we saw on the Lannister armor. But aside from that, I don't like the design. It has all the tropes of fantasy armor, and in my opinion, it's overly complicated. Whenever I say something like this in a video, by the way, I undoubtedly get a comment that it's a fantasy, as if that should ever be an excuse for bad design. The issue I have is that it is highly impractical, if not dangerous. My biggest grievances are the ridges on the breastplate and lower arm van brace pieces. 
you want to have your breastplate smooth so that any weapons or projectiles will just glide off, not get caught up in all of the crevices. Added to this, his gorget, or neck covering, is a good inch above his breastplate, so you could easily stick a weapon under there and stab him in the throat. So why would you set out to be at a disadvantage at the get-go? Don't get me wrong, I took issue with the leather scale mail armor of the Kingsguard under King Robert Baratheon, which would offer no protection in the least, and that there was rarely any armor on the thighs. Kristen's cloth tunic, I mean, I don't think that's a gambeson, offers no protection either. And what's with the metal grommets on the elbows? Are those meant to be for ventilation? Let me know in the comments what you think of the Kingsguard armor. Mysaria, also called Lady Misery, played by Sanoyo Mizuno. This is the first nearly full shot that we've had of Mysaria. She is dressed fully in near white. In the trailer where we just saw her head and shoulders, it appears that she wore white as well. According to the book Fire and Blood, the source material for House of the Dragon, while Mysaria is serving as Mistress of Whisperers, she wore a hooded robe of black velvet lined with blood red silk. As one of my viewers Vanessa said to me on Twitter, Mysaria is described as having skin pale as milk, so since the actor isn't fair, they've gone with a white costume to tie in with her nickname, Misery the White Worm. One thing that I want to debunk that I saw some chatter online is that the pattern of her cape is a spider web. I can see how viewers might jump to that conclusion because Varys, also called the spider, was the master of whisperers under King Robert Baratheon. But if you zoom in closely, you will see that it's tree branches and that her undergown has leaves. Perhaps it's an homage to her home of leaves, where, according to the world of ice and fire, the sunny island is fertile with palm and fruit trees. As to the beautiful cloak fabric, I don't know where it's from, although I know that many cosplayers will be itching to source it out. According to Joel and Sons Fabrics, who provided many of the fabrics for the show, they said based upon the drape, it appears to be a brocade fabric, possibly with some cotton content, but it's not from them. The fancy clasp is silver to tie in with her shoulder duster, silver earrings, and choker. I will add that this also ties into Damon, who also wears silver. Overall, I was really happy with the costumes. In the next few weeks, I'm planning a live stream with my fellow queen, Tatiana Melendez, Alicia Kingston, and Tony Teflon. I'll give you a heads up about the date and time. But in the meantime, if you haven't seen any of my other House of the Dragon videos, check out my House of the Dragon teaser reaction video. Thank you for spending time with me. I'll see you in the next video.